So I think I've decided I'm going to take a crack at making an entire instrument from scratch. And as you know, I live in a motorhome, so I don't get a lot of fancy perks like a table saw or bandsaw or spindle sander or thickness planer. So I'm probably going to be breaking a lot of rules and kind of building this thing the Dan Thompson way. Um, I'm already breaking the first rule and I'm building it entirely out of scrap wood that I've come across. Uh, this wood came from my uncle's house after the cabinet builders were done I asked if I could harvest some scrap wood so I got a couple of slabs of maple and then the rest is just maple plywood actually so I've always wanted a fretless piezo only base so I'm gonna try my best shot at making a fretless piezo base out of this and just the tools that I can carry with me in my motorhome either this is gonna be really awesome and I'm gonna prove that you don't need all those other fancy tools or this is gonna be an epic fail either way it should be fun so stick around All right, so I think the biggest limitation that I've hit so far is just the awkward shape of my scraps. And uh, so I'm just trying to plan out my build here. I think I'm gonna do a neck through body and the neck will be made of mostly maple plywood. Maybe stack three deep like that. And then I've got this slab, three quarter inch slab of maple that'll go on top. And that's gonna be most of the strength is gonna be in the fingerboard right there. And then I'm gonna make a body shape kind of out of my random leftover scrap pieces piled up I think probably about three high as well so um, kind of limited by my smallest and awkward shaped pieces but I think I came up with a design idea that I like so uh, we'll just go ahead and start gluing things together and see if we can't figure it out you're wondering what I'm doing here I didn't have enough room with my scrap wood to have a full-size paddle headstock so I'm making one Okay, so the one specialty tool that I'm going to use here is a biscuit joiner. And this is just the cheapest one you can get at Harbor Freight. I think it was like 60 or $70. And I actually bought it to make the countertops in my freshly remodeled motorhome. It's the only reason why I have it, but I decided I'd keep it because I could see its application in guitar building for sure. So I'm pretty sure that I could just edge glue this uh, plywood 
and it would probably be strong enough. I mean, Type Bond's pretty strong stuff. Um, but since I have it, uh, I may as well use it and it'll just make sure that these wings are on there nice and strong and it'll help align it all when I'm clamping it together. It won't be shifting around as much. So uh, there's a couple benefits to it. I made that look really easy with all those time lapses and jump cuts, but that was really hard to cut out uh, with a jigsaw. It's very obvious that this is not the pine and OSB material that I used for my last base. This uh, inch and a half thick maple plywood does not cut easy. My jigsaw was overheating and struggling in, in some spots, but uh, a bandsaw definitely would have been the better tool for the job here. But you know, where would I put it? I live in a motorhome. So the jigsaw, it worked. I just went slow. I put my body into it um, so that I didn't have to, you know, use too much arm strength. But it took about an hour to cut out this shape. And this is a very simple, basic shape. Headstock was a little more intricate, but uh, yeah, about an hour over overall to do that. So it's definitely possible with the jigsaw. I also might need a new blade. It was definitely slowing down there at the end, so. Okay, so originally I had wanted to do my fingerboard the full length because I just have a piezo bridge and I'm not doing any magnetic pickups. So this would be kind of my tug bar going all the way through. And uh, the only problem with that is that my piezo bridge is actually wider than this slab of maple. So that would look really funny. So instead, I'm going to end it. My bridge should end up somewhere around here. And I'm going to end up ending this thing probably around right here. So I have room to kind of move that around to properly intonate it and stuff. Um, so I'm gonna do a little bit shorter fingerboard and I'll, I'll carve this off in kind of a cool design, I think, um, that kind of matches the contours of the rest of the body. think that I haven't broken any of the rules of guitar building yet, just wait and see. 
So, here's the deal. A uh, couple of things. Obviously, my fingerboard is a lot thicker, and I told you one of the reasons why. The other reason is because um, I don't have a whole lot of faith in this plywood because I decided to lay it horizontally instead of vertically. Vertically would have given me more strength in my neck. Um, horizontally, I think it's just going to look cooler. And so that's the other reason why I decided to leave my fingerboard so thick is because there's going to be a lot of strength in this fingerboard. The problem is the truss rod would probably be too deep in the neck um, to really access it well in order to make adjustments. So my solution is I'm actually just going to route the truss rod channel into the fingerboard as opposed to into the neck. Most people do it in the neck. I don't see why I can't do it in the fingerboard. And that'll put the truss rod where it's supposed to be. And that'll actually solve another problem where when people um, are making their necks, they bury their truss rod and then they need to drill a hole in there to find it. Well, I'm just gonna route all the way out. So you're gonna see the truss rod when I glue it in place. Um, so that should solve that problem. The other problem I'm running into is about a 12 inch radius block to radius my fingerboard. And it's great for up here, fits perfectly fine. Down here, the fingerboard, because I decided to have it come all the way this far, um, is too wide for the radius block. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a very small round over bit all the way across the full length of the fretboard. And just very small, and I might not even go the full depth, just enough so that this can hug the edges as I'm radiusing the fretboard, or fingerboard, there's no frets on this thing. So, um, and I think as I sand it down, the radius, it'll become less pronounced up there in the front. So I think it's mostly gonna disappear, but you know, I'm not an expert, I just pretend like I am on YouTube, so we'll see how this goes. All right, here's my ghetto solution to a router fence. I used to have one that attaches here, and I'm fairly certain that I actually didn't know what it was. And so when I condensed all my tools to live in a motorhome, I probably just chucked it. And so now I have to make my own. So what I did here is I just clamped up a straight piece of wood, and then I just measured the distance of, uh, from the end of my router to the edge of the bit, it's two and seven eighths inches. And then I just measured the distance here and clamped this sucker down. I think that's gonna work. I'm gonna go shallow at first and we'll try it out. So it appears it likes to go one way more than the other. So we're gonna start over here and go down the other way. Gotta admit, I'm shocked at how well this worked. This thing is pressed tight in here. I didn't need to hammer or anything to get it in, but I did have to use some pressure from my fingers. And perfectly straight in the middle, sits nice and flush with the fingerboard. And it looks like depth-wise, it's gonna be about perfect for our fingerboard. So, Dan Thompson way. The wrong way, the faster. The clamps are off, the glue is dry, and we are left with a very shapeless slab of sort of a guitar shape. Uh, it's really thick. Uh, it's hard to imagine what it's gonna look like when it's all finished, but so far it actually seems like it's going to be very comfortable to play. I really like the shape. Um, I think it's gonna work out well. So typically when I make a guitar building video, I do one video complete start to finish. 
Uh, I'm going to try something a little bit different this time. You guys can let me know in the comments if this is something that you like. But typically, I would stop at this point when I know that I'm not going to have it done in time to make a video. And I would just real quick throw together a product review video and then continue this project next week. But this time, I'm going to go ahead and edit and upload what I have. And you guys can sort of follow along in like a two or three part series. And then maybe at the end, I'll do like an overview video that just kind of summarizes the whole build start to finish. Kind of unofficial great guitar build off style. The reason I'm doing that is because I recently took a poll on my channel on what kind of content you want to see me make moving forward. Uh, you guys probably know that I took quite a long break to finish up the remodel of my motorhome. Um, so I am back, I'm making new content, and you guys overwhelmingly want to see more guitar building, DIY, modding sort of content. So that's why I've jump straight into this, even though I have lots of products still to review. So I am going to be sprinkling in some product reviews from time to time. But from now on, I think the focus is going to be more of this and less of the other stuff. So if you guys like that, let me know in the comments. Make sure you're subscribed so you can see the next installment of this. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars, and I'll see you in that next video.